Varicose veins are the unsightly and sometimes painful bulging vessels usually found in the lower extremities. To understand the cause of varicose veins, we first need to look at the structure of the vessels in our bodies. Whenever we look at a graphic representation of the circulatory system, the vessels in the body are labeled blue and red. The red vessels are the arteries, which are structurally optimized to carry the blood from the heart to the periphery of the body. These vessels have three layers with a thick muscular middle layer called the media which can open and close the artery to provide more or less blood flow to the end organ or structure depending on demand. This configuration can also assist in circulating the blood around the body by propagating the pulsations of the heart. When the heart contracts, a bolus of blood is pushed through the arteries, the arteries stretch in response to the bolus and the muscular wall will contract the vessel back to its baseline diameter and propel the blood and nutrients around the body. These arteries are depicted as red because they almost always carry oxygenated blood which actually has a reddish hue. The veins on the other hand are the blue vessels on a graphic picture of the circulatory system. The veins are designed to bring the deoxygenated blood from the periphery back to the heart for reoxygenation. Because we walk upright, the heart would have a hard time pushing the blood down to the toes, through the small capillaries, and back up through the veins if all these vessels were simple tubes in the body. The veins, therefore, are valve to keep the blood flowing in the right direction. As the blood surges through the veins back towards the heart, these valves open and allow the blood to pass. When the flow stops and reverses, the valves will close to prevent the blood from falling back to the feet, sort of like a series of locks on a river. In most circumstances, the veins and arteries run together in the body. There are exceptions in our extremities, however. As you can see, there is a vein running adjacent to the main artery in the leg. This vessel is deep in the tissues, situated between the muscles and bone, and is referred to as the deep venous system. However, there is another parallel vein running under the skin surface with no associated artery. This vessel is part of the superficial venous system and runs in the fatty tissues just underneath the skin. This particular vessel is called the greater saphenous vein and runs from the inner thigh down past the knee and joins back up with the deep system at the inner ankle. The other member of the superficial venous system in the leg is called the small saphenous vein and comes off the deep system right behind the knee, runs in the fatty tissues under the skin of the calf, and hooks back into the deep system in the region of the outer ankle. These actual CT images show the relationship of the deep and superficial veins in the leg. In the thigh region, the femoral artery and femoral vein run deep to the tissues adjacent to the bone, while the greater saphenous vein runs right under the skin surface in the subcutaneous fat. The muscles, bones, and associated connective tissues afford some extrinsic support to these deep veins and helps maintain their shape and diameter. In addition, as we walk, the contracting musculature of the leg can actually squeeze on these vessels and helps propel the blood back towards the heart. This is called the calf muscle pump complex and acts like an auxiliary heart or pump in the legs. This is also the reason that occasionally, young cadets standing at attention for long periods of time will pass out and fall to the ground. The veins are a capacitance system, meaning that they can hold a lot of blood and simply dilate up to accommodate the extra volume. If you lock your knees and deactivate the calf muscle pump complex, blood will pull in the lower extremities until there is insufficient volume to pump to the brain. In an act of self-preservation, the brain shuts down, the cadet falls to the ground, and the head becomes level to the heart, restoring blood flow to your noodle. 
The superficial veins run right under the skin surface in the subcutaneous fatty tissues and therefore do not have the extrinsic support of the muscles and the bones like we saw in the deep system. We are depending on the intrinsic strength of the vein wall to maintain shape and size. In an individual predisposed to varicosities, these superficial veins can dilate up as the weakened wall stretches. This pulls the valve leaflets apart, allowing the blood to reverse direction, developing a column of blood on the next intact or competent valve. Over time, this valve will eventually fail, and the cycle continues until the vein becomes completely incompetent with no intact valvular system. The body then has to find an alternate way to drain the blood from this incompetent vein, so these tortuous vessels right under the skin surface dilate up and become the painful and unsightly varicosities that develop on the legs. The number one risk factor for developing varicosities is genetics. If your mom, dad, brother, or sister had varicosities, you may be at risk, again, thought to be due to the intrinsic weakness in the superficial vein walls. Other risk factors are prolonged standing or sitting, obesity, multiple pregnancies, or previous venous injury. The diagnosis of varicose veins begins with a history and physical. We note the duration, severity, and distribution of the varicosities, as well as the associated clinical symptoms, which usually include a painful or heavy feeling, particularly at the day's end. The next step is an ultrasound. With the ultrasound, we can identify the size of the leg veins, the distribution of the varicosities, and the direction of blood flow through the vessel. We first evaluate the deep system to ensure there are no deep venous clots. Occlusion of the deep system precludes treatment of the superficial venous system since we need at least one open channel to drain the legs. We then use a Doppler ultrasound to evaluate the direction of flow. With the Doppler on the vein, the technologist will squeeze the calf which will cause blood to rush through the veins towards the heart which shows up as a peak on the Doppler graph. When the pressure is released, the blood will stop and reverse flow towards the feet which shows up on the graph as a peak in the alternate direction. If the valves are intact, as in this case, the valves will close and there is no significant flow reversal. However, if the vein is incompetent, the reverse flow can continue for multiple seconds, as in this example, where the flow reversal is greater than three seconds. The ultrasound can also determine if the incompetent vein is supplying the regional varicosities. Contemporary treatment of varicose veins is basically an outpatient procedure. Using the same ultrasound, a needle is guided into the incompetent vein below the takeoff of the lowest varicosity. A wire is advanced through the needle over which a carrier sheath is placed and positioned near the junction of the deep and superficial veins in the region of the groin. With the sheath in place, a second needle is sonographically guided to the periphery of the incompetent vein and a high volume of a weak anesthetic is injected around the vein. This serves three purposes. One, it compresses the vein walls to improve the efficacy of heat ablation. Two, the fluid protects surrounding structures such as the skin, small arteries, and nerves. And three, most importantly, it numbs the area so the patient does not feel the actual ablation. The wire is then removed and replaced with either a laser fiber or microwave catheter, both of which ablate the incompetent vessel and heat seal the lumen. This blocks the flow to the varicosities and the patient is then placed in a high-grade compression stocking for approximately two weeks to prevent the superficial veins from opening back up. Eventually, the varicosities will clot off, shrink, and are ultimately resorbed by the body. This is the before image of a gentleman with symptomatic lower extremity varicosities and the post-endovascular treatment image showing marked improvement with essentially complete resolution.